Hello, today we're going to look at the third step in our Verilog Iceberg C bus master design. And in this case, we're going to try to fix up some clock speed issues from step two. This is step two, um, as we saw at the end yesterday. And the trick is that the clock that we're giving here is running at system clock speed, which in this case is actually looking at two nanoseconds. And the reason why it's coming in this way is because that's what we told the simulator when we created our module. It gets this information from the time scale. And in this case, the time scale, one NS, is one nanosecond going to be one delay. So if we really want our simulation to run this fast, that's fine. Um, but in this case, we want to actually get the timing accurate for the I squared C device. If we ran our I squared C device at uh, a two nanosecond clock, that would be 500 megahertz, which is uh, about 5,000 times faster than the I squared C bus should be run at. In fact, the standard I squared C bus speed is 100 kilohertz. So we have a couple choices here. Um, we could just drop this clock rate down. So, for example, we could go to 10 nanoseconds. Um, 10 nanoseconds would be um, 10 nanosecond delay here, which would actually be a 20 nanosecond clock. Um, we could go 100 nanoseconds. We could even go up to a, a microsecond. Um, and a microsecond, that would be a megahertz clock. Um, well, actually, half a megahertz clock, um, 500 kilohertz. Because remember, we're going to spend one clock delay low and one clock delay high, um, which is even still too fast. In fact, what we really want to do is get to that 10 microsecond clock. So we might think, all right, well, we'll just go ahead and make this five microsecond clock, five microseconds down, five microseconds up. That gives us 100 kilohertz. So uh, we'll be brave. We'll make that change. We'll go to relaunch. And what we'll find is we'll get an error. And the error is because uh, error on line 24, invalid value specified for time unit. The Verilog standard indicates that these are powers of 10. So we can go one microsecond, two microseconds, 10 microseconds, but we can't do five microseconds. Um, so instead, what we can do is make that one, and then we can change our clock down here to be five. So now we'll be down for five microseconds, up for five microseconds, and this should give us um, the clock that we're looking for. Um, in fact, if we zoom out far enough to see a clock, actually we don't see a clock signal here yet because the simulation didn't hit finish and it only ran for one microsecond. We really needed to run quite a bit longer now. And so now if I run this, um, we zoom out enough, we'll see a clock. That clock is running for 10 microseconds, and sure enough, we have ourselves a um, 100 kilohertz clock. Well, you think that we are done, but that's great for some. Okay, so we have a clock running at uh, 100 kilohertz. If you recall from our discussion on the Xilinx board, the Xilinx board runs with a 100 megahertz clock. And we need to simulate that 100 megahertz clock. Um, 100 megahertz, uh, that's going to be 10 nanoseconds per clock period. Um, and so if we go back to our one nanosecond clock here, um, if we're down five, up five, this should take us back to our 100 megahertz clock. Let's just verify that our clock pulse is now 10 nanoseconds. And sure enough, we're at 10 nanoseconds. So now we have to ask the harder question. If the external reference clock is at 100 megahertz, how can I possibly drive the I squared C bus at its desired 100 kilohertz? And the answer is we need to adapt the clock. 
So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the simulator because we're going to end up changing things up pretty much. And we're going to go back over to implementation here. And I'm going to make a clock adapter. And that clock adapter is actually a clock divider. Um, we're going to tailor it for our I squared C board. So this is going to be another Verilog module. And it's going to be I squared C um, clock divider. And it's going to have a reset signal, a clock in. We'll actually call this ref clock. And we're going to have I squared C clock. And I squared C clock will be output. And so this module is actually going to be really, really simple. Um, I squared C clock is going to be a register. These are going to be wires. And I need to hold the reference clock. Or for every X number of reference clocks, that's going to set whether we're high or low on I squared C. And if we have a 100 megahertz clock coming in, then I want to be able to divide this down by, um, uh, let's see, if we're coming in at 100 megahertz, we need to divide it down by 1,000 to get us to the 100 kilohertz. So um, we're going to make a register that has um, 10 bits in it called count. And we're going to use this as a count up or a count down either way. Um, and then we're going to have our always block. So always at our ref block is reset equals one, begin, and else. Oops. Okay. So this is our standard uh, always block for just about everything. Um, always on a clock, there's our reset, else not reset. Well, in reset mode, we want to drive our I squared C clock equal to zero, and our count equal to zero. If we're not in reset, then if count is equal to zero, um, I squared C clock equals not I squared C clock. And then count equals some new value. Well, in this case, it's going to be a thousand. Okay, so this is actually going to be a countdown timer. And the thing you might want to think about is we talked about how to build a count up timer. Um, we didn't talk about doing a count down timer. Um, count up timers are actually more efficient because we can do that trick with the flip-flops where the output of the flip-flop goes to the next for the uh, ripple carry. So if that's really the case, um, we're going to actually change this and have this be a count up. So if our count is equal to our chosen delay, then we'll negate the clock, we'll reset the counter, Otherwise, we'll start counting up again. Now, you might want to pay attention to the fact that really, if we want to divide the clock by from a 100 megahertz clock down to a 100 kilohertz clock, this really should be half of that. Now, one other thing we should probably pay attention to. Well, first of all, let's go ahead and use this. So our next step is going to be to adapt our step two module um, and see if this clock works. So we can go back to simulation, we'll go to test step two, and in step two now, what I want to do is I want to use that module that we just declared. And if you've not used a uh, Verilog very much, it's sometimes hard to know how to set up a module to instantiate it. So go back to you know, implementation, I can click on a Verilog module and under Design Utilities, there's actually a UHDL instantiation template. 
and this is going to show me the Verilog code I need to make one of these modules. So I can just copy, go back over to simulation, go back to test, and I can paste. And now I just, these are the signals that are going into the module. And here I can go into um, what this uh, simulation wires should be. So our reference clock goes in and our I squared C clock comes out. Okay, so at this point now we can verify that step two has the right clock and then step two has I squared C clock already in it. If I save this, So remember, we're, we're making our reference clock here be 100 megahertz. Here, we're dividing it by 1,000 to make it um, 100 kilohertz. So if I run this simulation, okay, so if we wait long enough, we will get to a finished state. First thing we want to try to verify is how long that clock is. And the bus clock, the reference clock, is uh, 10 nanoseconds. That's 100 megahertz. That's exactly right. And I've got to zoom way out now to get to this clock, which is actually running now at 10 microseconds, uh, which is exactly what we want for a 100 kilohertz clock. So, so far, we're in great shape. Problem is, um, even though we've dropped reset, we aren't driving in any of the I squared C bus. So, we got something going on here where the I squared C lines aren't being initialized. So, we'll have to go back in and sort that out. So let's go down to buy sim, and we'll have to go in to debug this. But before we go too far into fixing that, I do want to go back to our clock divider. And I want to point out that if the reference clock changes, this design has to change. And so we want to be kind of minimizing that as best as we can. And the way we can do that is to make this a parameterized module. And so I can add a parameter. And we'll call that delay. And we're going to make that equal to 1,000. And in here now, I can use delay divided by 2. And this is not going to be a division circuit. This is actually going to be a constant divided by a constant. Verilog can evaluate this during compile. And so our 1,000 delay will become 500. And in fact, we can go over to um, the test where we're using this, and we can even force it into the proper relationship by using a pound sign and in parentheses to dot delay and then the value we want delay to have. So this is actually overriding the default fault value, and in this case, it's making it very explicit that our delay is really um, going to be a thousand clocks here. So let's first of all make sure that that change worked. We're still at 10 microseconds. So, excellent. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out what's going on. And so, to debug this, I can go into. Um, so, I want to say the simulator. Apologize. So, we can go to our unit under test. And 
if we're really changing driving SDA, SDA really should have been driven here in um, reset. So let's first of all make sure that we're getting into and out of reset. So we can run. And what's interesting is I'm not getting into reset. So now we've got to try to figure out what's happening there. Um, and the trick here is that we are trying to use I'm trying to actually see. Let's restart. So I squared C clock is pulsing. Reset did go down. Run this again. Okay, so reset does not equal one. Oh, ha ha! So what's happening is when we first get to this, we are sitting right now early on in the simulation where we're waiting for the positive edge of our I squared C clock. That happens after reset has already been dropped. So we have a timing, a race condition here where our test module is waiting not long enough for reset to go high. This really should be waiting at least 10,000 clock cycles so that reset is high after I squared C clock has gotten a chance to get started. Okay, so here we're still at the reset is still zero. Oh, of course it is because the reset here. reset here is the same reset here and this clock doesn't start until reset goes low. So to fix this what we're going to need to do is so first of all if we take out the reset logic from here Still valid verilog, but let me show you what's going to happen. If I relaunch, what we see is I squared C clock is now not defined. And the reason for this is we're negating a value that we don't know what the value is. So to fix this, we can do an initial block. can run this for a period of time. Here we've hit a positive edge of the clock, reset is still one. So we can actually take that breakpoint out. We can verify that we get to this breakpoint. And we can even see that we're shutting up our state machine. And 
And so here we've begun pulsing the I squared C plot. Um, here we've begun running the state machine. There's the beginning of our start state. The problem now is our test code isn't waiting long enough. So we'll add another zero there. So we're going to wait a little bit longer, and in fact, what we see now is the familiar pattern of the I squared C bus doing its start, sending out the address, the read-write data, and just about ready to return to a stop state. So there it is. There's our um, I squared C with proper timing. We should be able to now just go ahead and double check that. If I measure these, we see that our timing is just about 100 kilohertz. Um, this 0.2 round dot there, we can actually adjust inside here by making it delay minus one. So we're shorting our count at zero. So now if I double check this, our timing is spot on 10 microseconds. So there's step three, adjusting the clock to slow down a high speed reference clock to a much slower bus clock. Um, and this is a typical kind of thing that you do in a Verilog design where you have many pieces of hardware, each with their own different clocks.